Cammy. Hi. Here we are. This is my first in person. <gasps> and it feels good. Oh my God, I'm so happy look I get these, to pop your cherry. Look at these cool black walls. I know. Look at these cool velvet We're couches. Vibing. We are here together in New York City and we have not been together in so, so long. So long. Cammy is one of my good friends from boarding school's little sister. So I've known her for a very, very long time. And she has been crushing the creator world for a really long time. And You're so kind. Very much helped me figure out what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> when you first start to try to become an influencer, <laughs> it feels like so daunting. And you're like talking to your s to 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 grow. You have to talk to an audience of like 10, 10, <laughs> zero, as if you are already an influencer, because otherwise, how are you ever yeah. going to grow? It's so weird. Because no one's like, they have to have something to follow. Mm -hmm. And it is the s most vulnerable, freaky thing. Like now you and I can like go spout the fuck off in our stories without even thinking about it. Tell you are as TMI as I mm -hmm. am on stories. There is nothing off limits. We can chat, chat, chat. But at the time I'd be like... Uh, today I made spaghetti <laughs> for dinner <laughs> and you Cammy, was my first call as you guys as most of my listeners know I tried to get a book deal and my publisher was basically like every single publisher was like go to hell you don't have an Instagram audience like why would we ever give you a book deal so I called Cameron I was like you've got an Instagram audience how how do how I do that <laughs> and you were like I don't know, dude, but try this. Like, I you mean, gave I don't, me, yeah. You gave me hours and hours of advice. You were always available over text. So I wanted to start this by saying thank you. Oh, my God, of course. Look and at I us know. now. Look at us now. I said this <laughs> on my show, but, like, the comical part of this all is now I'm like, Caroline, how? Uh, no, it's fun because we you started a podcast four years ago. Yeah. Cammy's incredible podcast. Is it still called Freckled Foodie? It's still yeah. called Freckled Foodie and Friends. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Cameron's... Instagram used to be freckled foodie and food mm -hmm. freckled foodie because you were very food focused yes. and you're also very freckly so freckly so it used to be freckled foodie and as you've evolved into being what do you call your account motherhood uh, I say lifestyle mental yeah. health motherhood lifestyle mental health motherhood of course yeah. lots of mental health mm -hmm. like just a sort of awareness b telling us exactly where you are and sharing yeah. what you're up to um but yeah you very much helped me figure out how to just not be like a vulnerable freak on the internet. What's the greatest gift I could give? Well, actually, we're I still love, vulnerable freaks on the yeah, internet. Yeah, but I love consuming your content. So I'm so happy that content. I had any role Yeah, I think in that. there's – I don't know about you, but I try not to – Yeah, scroll. I do know yeah. about you, actually. <laughs> I try not to scroll. I go to very specific people, mm -hmm. and you are one of my lookups. Same with you. I look you up, and I look up like – two other people who I specifically am like, what happened in their day yes. today? <laughs> I want to know everything. And do you find that your algorithm still doesn't show you those people? Because I'm like, I only want Cammy's content. Just show her, make her number one. I never look at, I never scroll my feed. I'll oh, me either. Stories. Only stories. So yeah, for the most part, they're like five people I want to watch are at the front. Yeah, no. But then every once in a while I get tossed at someone in and I'm like, Get her out of here. Right, get her out of here. I, Not I, that I don't like her. It's just I, I, yeah. I only have allocated time. Exactly. I only have allocated time. When I look at my phone at the end of the day and it's like, you spent 10 hours on your phone today. I no. want to check it out the window. As Taylor Swift would say, like, find something high to jump off of. <laughs> it's like, like I I don't like myself. No, I get days. really mad at myself. On do you do a, a lot of your work on your like video editing emailing on your phone or are you a laptop there's actually nothing i hate more than being on my phone um so like 95 percent of my text messages are done on my computer okay i hate being on my phone do you edit your videos on your phone um i'm trying to think of what i even edit quite honestly i edit very few things yeah because you're not doing like a cooking reel right and you're if i do my right hand edits a because, again, I do not like being on my phone. The thing I have done is tried to create a life that makes me the happiest. And I know that being on my phone does not make me happy. So I prefer to have my laptop open. That way, like, I can pop. It's usually on, like, our kitchen island if I'm downstairs. Yep. I'll text from that. Mm -hmm. I really hate texting on my phone. I hate emailing on my phone. Like, I will not respond to an email on my phone. I don't know the last Whoa. time I did. So I have a tab. Do later. So I never have emails that are okay, so you open the you open the email on your phone. If like I'm on the subway or uh -huh. like, I mean, I don't live in the city anymore. I don't know why that was my thing. Here if we are. I'm, We're in the city. Yeah. If I'm, and I commuted this morning. Yeah. If I'm like waiting 
for those five minutes where I'm waiting for my toddler at pickup. I'll open my emails and I'll see if there are any. And if I either delete them, if it's spam, if I need to respond to them or I need to work on something, they go into label, do later. And then- Whoa, and that makes that your night, inbox look manageable. Yeah. Or that next day, whenever. When I when I allocate email time, I sit down on my laptop, I go to my do later tab, and I go through the emails I need to respond to on my laptop, never on my phone. This, see, <laughs> you're still giving me <laughs> the good tips because I am very much a get the email, respond to the email. Oh, no, 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 no. I cut that out. I can't. I, I hate being on my cell phone. I, I don't know what it is. It's weirdly cool. i'd be curious if people agree with me it's honestly a post-concussion thing oh yeah 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 wait will I, you tell us a little bit about that yeah well i've had uh, six concussions That's i think a lot too many yeah, yeah way too many six too many in my opinion Six too many um and the last one was five years ago in next month five years ago next month no 20 march 2018 yes uh-huh. five years ago what year are we? We 20, got it. 20, six years ago. Yeah. Six years ago in March. I can do oh it. God. I was like, you're right. Yeah. No, nope. We're in 2024. Six. Um, and I got hit by a car while I was crossing the street. In New York City. In New York City. In Brooklyn. Yeah. Um, and suffered from a really bad concussion. It was when I was still in the corporate world. I was then on disability for two months. This is kind of what sparked me to be like, why am I at a job that I thought I really loved, but it actually made me a more anxious and like high strung and intense depressed person yeah and that's a whole separate story that we can definitely get into but it basically sparked a lot of change in my life I kind of think of it as you know how you have those moments where it's like before and after Mm -hmm. for me it's the accident and it's having kids wow and I feel like it's both have shifted so much of my life and my mentality and everything and ever since then there's something about being a phone I get very overstimulated by life and it's the I I really don't know what it is, but if I'm on my phone trying to do something and then my kid wants something or Joe's, my husband's asking me a question or there's a noise, I like my insides want to climb out of my body. Yeah. And I don't feel that way on my laptop. Okay. So I really just try to limit the amount of time I'm on my phone. God, what a great uh, self-aware thing. Was there like a point I where mean, I you- I so much work to do, but thanks. I mean, was there a point where mm-hmm. you like figured that out? Like like for me, my example of that is caffeine. Like I had this one day, I was I was anxious, anxious after I had my second Callum. Mm-hmm. And like I knew at this point because I'd had my first, I'd been an anxious first time mom and I was like, that ain't happening again. And so then I had Callum, I had like no anxiety. I was never worried about him because- spontaneously combusting. I wasn't Mm -hmm. worried about his stroller just strolling down the hill without me. Like all that anxiety was gone. And then one day I started to feel anxious and it took me like two weeks, but all of a sudden I was like, holy fuck, it's the coffee. Well, yeah, you know, that's hard. drinking coffee. Did you like, how'd you tie it to the phone? Okay, well, I have that exact thing and I should stop drinking coffee, but look at me. I I mean, this is half caffeinated. 10 out of 10. Oh, it's half caff. Yeah. Yeah, that helps. But like, I I can't not. I don't sleep. I promise you can. I don't sleep. No. Look at these bags under my eyes. I don't think I've slept in like four days. But like it's the best part of waking up. It is the best part of waking up. It's Folgers But you know, <laughs> but you know what the even better is not having anxiety. Part about, okay, yes. But the best part of, I used to say the exact same thing. I used to be like, I cannot wait to go to bed so that I can wake up and have my coffee. Nothing is more freeing than waking up in the morning. Like, for instance, I had to boogie on over here to start these, this podcast. Nothing is better than waking up and having nothing to do except for take care of yourself. Like, no coffee had to happen for me to get into this chair feeling my best. So you don't have any – how do you poop? Sometimes I have a tea. Do you poop first thing I in the morning? I just have a AG1. just got on like a nice system. Yeah, my system is wrecked right now because yeah. I'm not sleeping. Yes. Oh, sleep. Like my whole sleep my whole life is in uh-huh. shambles. Uh-huh. Um, Tell us about that. Why, why are you not sleeping? <laughs> well, wait. Sorry. <laughs> Back to the reason – Yes. When did I figure this out? I honestly don't – I, there was not like a specific moment. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was when I realized that you could text from your computer and I was yeah. like, oh, this is so much better. Yeah. I also get the amount of text messages I receive a day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I looked the other day is appalling. Wait, can you actually find a number of uh, how many yes. texts? If Wait, you is go it a feature on your phone? To settings. Okay. Mine is actually so low. I'm really happy. My week average is 321 a day. It was a thousand the other week. 
321 feels low. That's, that's low for me. Day. Are you on a bunch of girlfriend text chains? Yeah. Yeah, and it's those. Bad. It's bad. It's so bad. When like Taylor and Travis have a moment. Blown up, blown up. Blow the fuck up. Like any, when it, when like a kid, when one of my mom friends is having a moment with the kid and needs advice. Yes. Blow the up. My family fuck chat. Up. I have one with a few cousins. I have one with every single cousin, aunt and our grandma. I yes. have my family with the partners. And it's like baby pictures. It's it's too much. It's uh-huh. too much. Uh-huh. So I get really overwhelmed the by different, it. The different college friends. The Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, other yeah. thing about me in this sense of overstimulation and phone is I do not have one notification on. Oh, yeah. That's good. Not one sound. Okay. Not one vibrate. My home screen. Nothing. Uh-huh. I, I have, I think, like 15 texts when I just was on my phone before this. Like nothing shows on my home screen. Oh. The only thing that Smart. I have. Smart. Yeah, my home screen is like, D- deal with this. Yeah. It <sighs> overrides the ringer for my husband. Okay. Our kid's school and our sitter. Because those are the only three people that could potentially really need me. I feel like we get in this podcast right now. <laughs> that is the hottest tip I've ever heard. Thank you. Yeah, wow. Okay. You should be making TikToks about this. You should be. Okay, after this. <laughs> Done. This is the TikTok content. content. The day. That's incredibly smart. Yeah. I, we have the exact same job, basically. And I spend almost all of my time working from my phone. And I mean, I probably spend one hour a day on my laptop. And Look, would you do DMs on your phone? Oh, yeah. Oh, God, no. <gasps> Never. Okay, so you're on your phone. A DM comes in and you just don't even look at the folder. I don't look at my DMs unless I'm sitting at my laptop and I have time to do them. And I respond to every single DM, which is a very toxic so trait. I... It's not it, It's but not smart of us, but it's it is. It's not smart but of us, not. but I, what a bizarre thing to not respond to somebody's question. Dude, I feel the same way. Ugh. I, it's really hard. It's really hard. But yes, it's only when I'm sitting down. I'm really trying to be better at allocating my time. Well, so am I as of this and minute. I will like try to time block. I'm not good at it. I'm yeah. trying. So like I will put in my calendar an hour and it's like emails slash DMs. And I try to use that time to sit on my laptop and do it. Because for me, I have ADHD. I get very overstimulated. I feel like my head is a ping pong being bounced around to everyone's needs. 100%. I'm going in and out of apps. I'm going in and out of mom, mm-hmm. work, mm-hmm. wife, friend. All of the things. Mm -hmm. And it's not beneficial for anyone involved. Anyone. So I try to allocate my time better so that I can like show up in each position as the best possible version. And that's like one of the ways that I do it. Okay. Because I think – I don't know your exact child care schedule, but I'd like to. Yeah, I'm happy to share. You and I both – are like working momming moms. Yeah. Like I call (laughs) myself – confusing. I call myself like a stay-at-home working mom. Mm -hmm. I have my big boys go to school. They're out of the what picture. time is that? And by school, I'm I that's a that's a mom guilt thing. It's fully daycare, but I call it school. Uh, do you well, ever do that? Is your five year old? What is nope, he not? He's in not in kindergarten? kindergarden yet. No, it's it's a hundred percent. But why is daycare? He not in Isn't he supposed to? He <laughs> he starts in the fall. Okay, boys. Actually, he couldn't even have gone. He wasn't old enough. Okay, but boys apparently you're also. A lot of people hold them back because, yeah, as we know, boys thing. are not as smart as girls. Yeah. So they could use the extra year of so brain growth. What time? So he'll start kindergarten school. They go to school. It's it's a it's like one of the only working parent designed schools okay. in Carmel. You can drop off starting at 730 and you can pick up at 6. Mm-hmm. There is no – time when you have to be there there's no time when you have to pick up like it's just that's unless it's that's six. your day <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't do that they do not like that that's your day use it how you will okay which is incredible a lot of the other schools as you know are like 9 a.m to 12 and which like okay i can go get a coffee i can go get a coffee in the south they literally call it they call the program mother's morning out i fucking hate that it's not something that i like so we can drop them off anytime during, during the day. Our boys, our big boys are starting to sleep in, which mm. ugh, is amazing, but it's also because they're going to bed later. So they'll sleep in until like 8.30 some days. So they get to school by 9 and we pick them up by 4. We used to pick them okay. up later. I recently like reorganized my child care, um, the baby. I have a yeah. 16-month-old and he is – an incredible sleeper, like your first was, not like your second. Nope. And so he sleeps like all morning. So I was like, why am I having a babysitter come while he's asleep? Like, 
that, that's already perfect working time. So I was having her not come until noon. So then my working hours were – my, like, nanny working hours were 12 to 5. But that meant that I wasn't picking up the boys until mm-hmm. 5. So we only had, like, two hours together. So I recently rescheduled. She now comes in the morning despite the nap. She leaves at 2. Because even though they're napping – there's still like when you're working, you're, you're still like, what, what did I hear beep? And and like most of the time with my second, like I can't count on it yes. to get anything. Yes. Done. I will say I can 100. Which is amazing. I can 99.9% count on it. But guess. your brain but yes. is still Oh, your brain is still there. I'm on. This is my right. responsibility. And you can't run out to go do something uh-huh. if you need to. And you certainly can't record a podcast no. because you're like, oh, sorry, um, mm-hmm. you know, it, Emily Oster. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's my baby. Be right back. Right. Yeah. Okay. So what's your – because I, I call that like stay-at-home working momming or whatever mm-hmm. because it's very much both. Like my whole day – and even if the nanny's there, I'm like popping in to give him a right. kiss or to help with lunch or whatever I feel like helping with that day. If I have an hour off and I just really need to be with him, I'll go hang out with him and she will do the laundry or yeah. – take care of something else what's your current layout you just had well not just three months ago three months ago yeah just had your second mm-hmm. two boys yes welcome I, to the club i love it uh what's your current layout so we're still kind of configuring what works best yeah. because it's, ev- it's a it's a it's constant mm-hmm. ebb and flow and it's something that i really struggle with and i don't have guilt i say this a lot i do not have guilt working yes i have jealousy I want to be with my kids 24-7. I get so jealous of my nanny sometimes. So jealous. But I also really love my job. Mm-hmm. And financially, we're 50-50 mm-hmm. income household. So, mm-hmm. like, if I want to upkeep our life, yeah. I need to keep working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So it's this really confusing. And for so long, I kept saying, I wish my brain could just choose to love more. And then my therapist was like, well, why don't you think about it of, like, how – amazing that I get to experience both. So that's, I'm trying to flip that script. So good. But it's hard oh, to, yeah. and some days you love more one more than the oh, other. of course. So you're like this brand, And it's always this- a day when you have the other one. Mm-hmm. Like when I have a full day of, of work ahead of me, I'm like, I just want to be with yes. my kids. They were and this, so like, amazing this like, morning. Why am I spending two hours filming this fucking sponsored no. content when, I don't know if you say your kid's Names. I don't, but but like when, when my baby, your baby or toddler, yeah, is being so fucking cute right now, and right. all you want to do. Okay, well that leads into. Sorry, I'll I'll go yeah, to the tracker. But I one bounce. other thing is, I said this year, and I think this goes for like work in general, and not just our job, because I think probably very few of your listeners do our job. Mm-hmm. Is I am only committing to things that I am like absolutely I want to do, and that goes for social plans. Mm-hmm. That goes for life. Mm-hmm. When someone invites me on a trip. Do I – like a friend, for instance, mm-hmm. do I really want to go or mm-hmm. am I like, I feel like I should go. Maybe I'll go. No, because mm-hmm. if I say yes to that and then the mm-hmm. time comes around, I'm like, I don't want to oh. go. I don't want to go. Oh. I don't want to go. Yeah. And that's how I feel about certain work things. I'll get an offer and I'll be like, I like that brand. Yeah. Okay. Oh, but it's a one-off. Like, mm, does that really make sense? Oh, okay. Yeah, we can squeeze it in. And then the time comes around. That's always where like – it just isn't working. Uh-huh. When I'm so excited by something uh-huh. and I say yes, when the time comes to film. When you get that email and you're like, what? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the best feeling. And that goes for any job. So I'm really trying to be better about that. Again, yes. allocating my time. Yes. Childcare, what we have configured after many iterations and conversations with my friends, because I don't know if you also feel like this, but I have guilt of like, is my job a real job? I know it is. But my one girlfriend's like, you used to work at JP Morgan. If you were still there. Would you have a full-time nanny? I'm like, fucking duh. Yes. She's like, so why don't you have one now? Yes. You work the same amount. Yes. You basically make the, you like, make the what are you doing? Amount. What are you doing? So our toddler is in school 9 to 3.30. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, So we did the, like, full day. There's, mm-hmm. like, full day extended plus in our neighborhood. It, How crazy is it that that's the full, full day? day? In our neighborhood, yeah. it's a very big working parent community okay. city, town. Yeah. So most programs – if not all, I think, have the option to do 7.30 to 6. Okay. Um, That's just like very standard because it's a very commuter working parent community. How interesting. Love. Amazing. Every single one of my girlfriends works a full-time job. Yep. Um, And we – I don't – maybe we should have done the full option – full day plus, which is 7.36 next year, but whatever. He's in school four days a week. Originally, we had signed him up for three days. He did the camp there over summer. And it was the first moment 
where I had time to myself in the house without him. Oh my God. There's I immediately called the school and I was like, can we add two more weeks of camp? Can yep. I add a fourth day? Because yep. now I'm pregnant. Yep. And I tried to add a fifth and I wasn't able to. So next year, all five days. Yes. So that's incredible. I love the school so much. He is so happy there. The teachers are incredible. It makes it like oh, yeah. he's so it's very academic focused. Yes. Like very academic. So he's already learning shit that I don't know. Yes. Evidently, like one planet has two moons. He, all this stuff that he tells me, I'm like, mm-hmm. I need to be smarter. I never could have taught you that. No. Yeah. Um, and this is a very interesting thing. We talked about mom, like I get jealous. Mm-hmm. I don't get jealous when I drop him off at school. Oh, me either. Because I'm like, have so much fun. It's school. You're supposed to be doing this. But yeah. if it's my in-laws, if it's my parents, if it's my sister, if it's our sitter, I'm jealous. I want to be doing everything that he's doing. I wish there was a world where I could just leave and they would just sleep. Yes. All you, they would do All is sleep. sleep. Which obviously is not possible. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, we had- Off button. Yeah. And you, they, your mom can just carry him around off. Exactly. <laughs> he's doing nothing interesting. He's saying nothing cute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we had an incredible sitter when we were in the city before he was in the school. Um, she became like a part of our family. Didn't want to let her go. So when we moved and he started school, she would come out one day a week to oh. just help with like pick she lives up. in the city. Yeah, pick up and afternoon. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I surprisingly got pregnant the week after we moved. <laughs> so now that we officially have two, she comes three days a week. Nine to five. We Your just sitter started comes this. reverse yeah. commutes yes. from the city. Because like, I love that. Once you find them, you it's keep them. Honestly, as if she were coming from Brooklyn to yeah. Manhattan. Okay. True. It, it's an easy commute. She gets on a train. Yeah. You pick her up. Yeah. Amazing. Um, and then so she's there three days a week. Uh-huh. And then my in-laws come one day a week. She's there three days a week. When does she come? We just started at nine to five. Nine to five. Amazing. Like, because you have a full time yes. job. So there's one yes. day a week where I'm alone with the baby mm-hmm. while our toddler's in school. And so then I'm doing like pickup and, you know, that kind of stuff with our baby and our toddler and all oh, afternoon and night. And then there's one morning where Joe's in the office uh-huh. and I do a full morning, uh-huh. pick up our sitter, drop off at school, that vibe. Yeah. And then on Fridays, I don't have her watch both of them alone. Just I think it's a lot. But he's so young. Yeah. So on Fridays, we tag team and we each take a kid. Um, so there are really three days of the week where I have nine to yes. five to be able to check out. Yes. But it's, 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 so it's hard because you're still in the house. Oh yeah. And like, I, like you, I pop in, I pop out. Uh-huh. I want to be there. I'm uh-huh. like, ah, I can't. My not. worst jealousy comes when Tanya, our sitter, nanny, whatever the word is, takes them somewhere really fun. Yep. If they're in the house, I can shell for the most part unless I like hear them hear the baby giggling yeah. and I'm like like it's the weirdest thing because you're like thank god they love this person oh, so much but also mm, yeah when Tanya takes them to the aquarium or to this place my museum that they like freaking go ham at like and I get these pictures of them just like grinning so huge mm-hmm. I'm like that is my my again I, I'm the same as you I don't like to call it mom guilt but my whatever it is Gets I get so jealous because I'm not guilty. I, I really yeah, am I'm not, not guilty. guilty. I'm, I'm at home. Jealous. I'm working. I'm so I had this moment. I, I actually talked about this in the episode I just recorded a solo, but I said this to my older sister, mm-hmm. and she does not feel this at all. So I was like, H- "How? Like I don't understand." She doesn't feel the jealousy. No, she's like, "Oh my god, I love that he gets to like." Like she sent him. That is so goddamn level headed. So goddamn. Ugh. Sent him to the beach with my parents for like five days, I think, when she and her husband went on a trip. And I was like, no, I could never. I could never. So jealous. She's like, but he was at a school. Like, you know, it just worked. And I was like, yeah, but I would need to be at the beach with them with mom and dad's help, but I would yeah. need to be there. And she's yeah. like, you're fucked up. You're crazy. So my in laws. I got to go on a vacation. Yeah. yeah. My in laws watch um, our sons once a week and they have since <gasps> our first was born. Yes. They're. So the cool. God sends yes. the best. My mom, I love you. She also wants to, but she doesn't always live near us. Yeah. She's kind of like by She doesn't always live near us. Yeah. She's, she like spends half of the yeah, year yeah, yeah. in Florida. Yeah. And they got us a like annual pass to the local zoo for his birthday. And it's the best zoo. I had taken it before and it was like a really pretty day out. And so I was like, when are you guys taking to the zoo? Like I knew how much that would mean to them. So I was like, when do you go to the zoo today? I'll pack him a lunch, have fun. They go, they get home. I'm like, tell me everything. How was it? He's like, it was so fun. And they're like, oh my God, we rode the carousel and he rode the pony. And I 
literally like they did nothing wrong oh nothing wrong i always need to like be clear about that but my heart sunk because i was like i've never taken him on the carousel or on the pony Mm -hmm. and i was i vividly remember sitting on the stairs because i was waiting for them to walk in the house they're showing me videos joe's with me i'm of course putting on a front of like that's so amazing you guys are so great oh my god tell me everything to my toddler Oh, this like it like gives me a pit. Yeah, we go upstairs and I look at Joe and we had just kind of talked about this. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Are you jealous? And he's like, No, honey, but I know you are. Yeah. And I was like, Was it obvious? And he's like, No, but I know you. Yeah. And I was like, I'm so jealous. Thank you for knowing my um, irrational jealousy. Yeah, I don't know. It, it it's so confusing because it's so important for them to have the relationships oh, yeah. outside of us. Oh yeah. The most important thing in the world. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing better than a child like really my we're here visiting in New York. My best friend, Lily, who is my five-year-old's godmother, and he is obsessed with her. Mm -hmm. Like, he will – if we're at home and, like, one of my friends came over and was like, Mattis, let's go to the park, he'd be kind of like, eh, like, mom, you're coming, right? Lily is like, Mattis, let's go get a croissant and then go to the park. And he's like, literally doesn't even look twice at me. He's out the door. There's nothing cooler than that in the entire world. And also you're like – do, do you care? Right. <laughs> Should I come with you guys? Yeah. I don't know. Okay, so talk to me about you just had your second kid. Yeah. You and your husband are now having to navigate this new world of parenting. Mm-hmm. When you have one kid, when one of you takes the kid alone, the oh, other you're, gets you're alone. alone time. When you have two kids, especially at the beginning, you never get alone time. Yeah. Are you Are you still breastfeeding? No, 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 no. I weaned at six weeks. Great. So yeah. there's at least the potential of a bottle. How are you guys doing with the division of labor? Like, do you guys have a set thing mm-hmm. on your – what's it called? On your pod that we just recorded, yeah. we talked a little bit about the roommate phase. Mm-hmm. Like, how's it going? So we were always – very adamant about division of labor. Mm-hmm. After our first, we like did the whole like fair play card deck. Okay. Yeah. I, did. I have a full episode that breaks down everything. It's called like why I think division of labor is so important. It's one of my most downloaded episodes because I literally talk how exactly we did it, what it looks like, what we broke yes. down, who owns what task, yes. how if you own the task, the other person doesn't think about it. Like I've never once touched a mm-hmm. trash bag, a recycling can. Mm-hmm. I don't know what day's trash mm-hmm. is. I don't know what day recycling is. Because I don't need to know. Mm-hmm. He has not grocery shopped in two years. Doesn't know where it is. He doesn't need to. Yeah. I own the task. He doesn't think about it. He owns that task. I don't think about and it. And therefore, there's no animosity. Yes. It's but also, it's like it takes the mental load off. Totally. Because I don't want to have to think about things. To be totally fair, he is way better at owning the tasks. Whereas, like, giving myself credit I was pregnant like I owned Charlie's night walk and he would kind of have to remind me yeah and one day he sat me down and was like look you're always really adamant about this but I feel like you own the Charlie walking task but I remind you every night which isn't owning it. which isn't owning it because then I still have to think yeah. about it isn't, aren't, aren't there three parts of the owning of a task like remembering to do it actually doing it and then like following up or something okay, I'm completely making it up but basically you're not supposed to think about the task you're not supposed you to think own. about it at all yeah um so he – yes, we basically really divided all of our tasks. And it was amazing because – Do you have a spreadsheet? No, but we worked through it with this okay. card deck. Like okay. I know I'm in charge of all the kids' doctor's appointments. Yeah. I book them. I know when they need their next one. I'm typically taking them because uh-huh. I have a more flexible job, et cetera. Uh-huh. Um, he owns all of our dogs' grooming, vet, yes. shots, that stuff. That just shifted. Yes. Um, and so we're reconfiguring it right now with mm-hmm. two and mm-hmm. figuring it out how it works. But – when we had one, for instance, he owned bath time and bedtime routine. Yes. So every day at 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock, I checked out. I was able to just – Every day. Every day. I would sit on the couch. It was when we were in our apartment and then in our house. And that was because he had been away at work all day. No, he works from home. Okay. So it was just because. Yeah. It was just I was typically division. like I owned mornings, he yeah. owned nights. I don't know. That's yeah. just kind you of – just figured it really out. He really likes bath time. I actually don't – like I hate getting my hands I so wet. Then it's like, I hate that. Yeah, yeah, I just, I, they're so cute in the bath. I like to pop in every once in a while. I'm like, oh, you're so cute. Bye. Um, and it was like their bonding time because yeah. I spent more time with him during the day. He works uh-huh. a corporate job. Uh-huh. So even though he's home for five days a week, yeah. um, I mean, you would think the day he goes to the office, he's going to war. He's a hyper involved dad. And like him leaving for the day breaks him. 
if if our toddler is not up by the time he has to leave for the office, uh, he's like, "Why didn't you get him up? I want to say goodbye." I'm like, "Oh, dude, you're you're gonna see him tonight." Um, so you'll be right back. Like, um, sweet. Basically, man. I we had it really well figured mm-hmm. out, and that hour of the night, I do remember one day being like, "Wait, when we have a second, I don't get this hour to uh-huh. myself." In the beginning, eventually. Yeah, they'll take the bath together. He'll do bedtime together. Yes. But like, it's hard when the baby is a baby and the toddler's a toddler. You, sorry to interrupt you, but you posted something today or yesterday that was like, "Hey, new mom, just a reminder that this is all temporary." All temporary. And that is such a good example of that. When you're in it and you're yeah. like, "Holy, you've just had your second, or you've just had your third, you're like, "I'll never, never be alone time. again." Like, and the other thing that's so hard about that is no one ever feels like they're getting a break. Like George will take the big Mm -hmm. boys to the park and he comes home and kind of is like, I'm done. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm done. And I'm like, you know, I was, I I was home with the 16 month old. Like, right. It's not like I was off and he's like, yeah, but he napped for so much of it. And I'm like, no, when you put it like that, (laughs) no, but (laughs) But but you're still still on. on. You're still on. Yeah. So what we have been trying to do now, our second is three months old and our kids are two and a half years apart. Mm -hmm. Um, as he's getting a little older, and again, we're raising our second way less intensely than we did our first when it comes to like structure. Oh, yeah. So this past weekend, I feel, A, I miss my husband yeah. because we're two ships passing in the night uh-huh. because a lot of it is divide and conquer uh-huh. when you have kids so freshly newborn. Like there's just – Oh, it's – Different needs, yep. different wants, different desires, different things. They're not playing together. They're, no. They're probably like, not even bathing together Our toddler yet. has – they just started. Yeah. Our toddler oh, has God. so many birthday parties. I'm not yeah. bringing our newborn no. to these birthday parties. Not gonna. Like, especially in the winter when yeah. literally every single human is sick. Mm-hmm. Um, So there's a lot of divide and conquer. What we've been trying to do is, especially on the weekends, like, okay, we each get an hour alone. Yeah. So there is one hour of the day where one takes two and the other gets – Yes. Alone. So on Saturday, I took them both. We happened to live walking distance from a park. Mm-hmm. I just wore the baby, took our toddler. He napped in my carrier. Uh, so Joe got to be alone. Joe in was the alone house. in the house, which no greater gift. No, no greater, greater gift. Gift for an hour. Like no, I do not want to go to the spa and get a two hundred fifty dollar massage. I want no, to I be just alone. Want to sit and read my fucking romance Maybe novel in, in my, my bed. bed. Yeah, not even on. The and bed. that's what I did. Yeah. So then he took the kids for an hour. I literally took my lunch upstairs because I was like, oh, goodbye. Of course you did. Um, eight. I I actually ended up getting two hours because there was a misconfiguration of the time and then he felt badly. Whatever. Perfect. Um, and I read in bed. I uh-huh. worked out upstairs. Uh-huh. Like they were still downstairs, but in our house, like, yeah, you can kind of separate. Sometimes so, I'll turn on my white noise in the middle of the day just to make sure I don't hear any. I mean, have you seen me in my noise canceling headphones? Oh, yeah. You were the big guys. Yeah, I have to. Mm-hmm. That's smart. So, yes, we're working through right now like our reconfiguration yeah. of the division of labor. But there are things that like I never think about. Mm-hmm. And there are things that he never thinks about. And it'll reconfigure as the kids get older and we, mm-hmm. you know, work through all that again the structure of my job is such a gift in that where like I'm able to do certain yes. things. Is it hard when like someone's sick from school? Like yep. I'm then typically the one. Yes. But yes. Okay. Yeah. You're giving sucks. me very good perspective on that because, and I think, I think what I need to do is go home and properly lay this all mm-hmm. out like you have, because similarly George and I like parent very 50, 50, like we both work full time, there is complete division. For instance, I've been in New York for four days and a lot of people have messaged me and be like, hey, I have to travel for work next week. What did you leave for George? Not one note. Never a note. And I completely understand. Same. Why moms are asking that. What what note did you leave? What food did you leave then? Okay, wait. This is really interesting. Not a one. I want to caveat this. Go. I'm going on a mom trip today. Yes. I'm literally, I'm leaving from here. You sure are. For two so, nights. So jealous. It's the first time either of us will be alone with both boys. Yes. And I had, maybe it's a little guilt because our newborn is not sleeping and it, it, it's a lot. I'm uh-huh. not going to act like it's not a lot to yeah, undertake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I get what I'm putting on his plate because he would be putting it on my plate if he was doing it. Like it's a lot. And I, I started to feel kind of guilty about it, which is weird because I realized if it was a work trip, I wouldn't feel guilty. So I want to just ding, ding there. Like, why do I feel guilty going to just 
rejuvenate and have fun with friends. I charge myself. Mm -hmm. um, and food is a task I own. Okay. So then I started Same. to be like, shit, do we have groceries? So I did go grocery shopping yesterday, but I do that every Sunday. Yeah. And then I went into this spiral kind of of feeling guilty. So when I was cooking dinner last night, I also made a like sweet potato chicken chili in the Instant Pot. And then I put it in the fridge. And then I like also made the shredded chicken for a rice dish. And I told Joe, I was like, okay, so you can have the leftover spaghetti meatballs for dinner tomorrow night. And then, and he was like, you did not have to do this. Job. He was like, Joe. why are you doing this? Ugh, Joe. And I'm like, you I, get it, Joe. I don't know. I, maybe it's a control thing. Maybe it's a me trying to like, and you know what? Leaving, get rid of my guilt. And maybe it's not even guilt, but leaving town is always a little anxiety and my packing right things and so maybe you were you were channeling that anxiety I into was. something productive and i could tell i was like this is just something that i like would like you, feel better you know doing? joe can feed your children absolutely he's done it a million times he's like i can just like yeah. eat this make a yeah. mac and cheese yeah. steam some broccoli yeah. like we yeah, we're yeah, good yeah. here i've done that before but I have friends, though, who completely, if they go out of town for three days, every single meal is labeled in the fridge what it is. And that's how their division of labor works. Mm -hmm. And so I do think, like, great if that's for you. But I literally say, see ya in four days. Yeah. I'm going. I did that once we went away when my in-laws watched our son, which I think is fair. Uh -huh. And I came back. Nothing was touched. She's like, no, we went out. We did this, which yes. good for her. Yes. And I'm like, why did I even do that? But again, that? it was an obsessive way for me to try to control, yeah. to like give an outlet to that anxiety. Yes. But notes for any of the other stuff? No. And I will say, I have this conversation with some of my girlfriends because I don't know. Does George work from home? Uh, No. Okay. Always the office. Because Joe works from home so much mm -hmm. and he is so hyper involved. Like he does school drop off every morning. He, he knows like he's... Quite honestly, I say that my friends will back me. He runs our household. Yeah, yeah. Oh, George is um, our CEO. Like, I am kind of always being reminded of things. Yeah. Like, this morning, he's like, I'm pretty sure we need to send more diapers to school this morning. Where uh, We need to get new sheets. Did you get them last night or no? Because he had already gone to bed when I reminded you. I'm like, no, the sheets are, you know, whatever. We need to send, like, every Monday. They send it home on Friday to, for us to wash. So he knows all of these things. This is George. And because of his work structure it allows him to do be more heavily involved in the weeds yeah he's coming yeah, down yeah, like yeah, he's yeah, so yeah. involved in the weeds that yeah. i will give credit i'm not saying like all dads deserve medals but some of my friends who are leaving notes it's because their husbands might be working yes these corporate jobs that yes. are in office where yes. like my girlfriend's like my husband's not home yeah he's literally not home from he literally doesn't know when the baby sleeps to 7 p.m like he yeah i don't think that's an excuse and i always want to be clear about that mm -hmm. like you should still know your kid's schedule it's not that right. hard right but i think that's why certain moms will feel a lot of like, I need to leave these notes mm -hmm. because their husbands may not be in the weeds with mm -hmm. the structure of their life. Mm -hmm. I also have friend, the friends who do this full schedule management when they go mm -hmm. out of town, which makes them, it's so hard for them to go to town. They will admit like, this is a me problem, it's, not a them and problem. And most of the time it is. I am a control, you know, mm -hmm. every, but it then also doesn't give the partner the ability to ever show up, this, just show up and mm -hmm. just own it. I, George and I very much like divide these tasks, like, but I, I do think it would be, it's really beneficial to do what you've done and sit down and actually divide it up because even though I know, like for instance, healthcare, if I go to the doctor, like I just show up, I go to the doctor. Don't even get me started. Uh, who pays for that? What healthcare is, what's healthcare? So it's like you fall in love with doctors that are not under our insurance plan. Stop it. My third child, my doctor had dropped my OB who delivered my first two children had dropped I I was going to the doctor's appointments alone by that point because third child he was yeah. at home with the other two wasn't go to one of my, my third ones. delivery was not covered by oh insurance. my first wasn't covered so talk about a fucking idiot what is wrong with us yeah because they sorry husbands that's your fault that was your division of labor but sometimes you mentioned this with like when the kids are sick you you end up being yeah. the deep I think you said that Maybe I did my brain was just saying it and it used to, I would get that like type of 
mom ragey fury Mm -hmm. because I'm like I have a big day at work too just because Mm -hmm. I work from home does not mean that this is not a full-time job and it would always be me who had to go and pick them up and then be at home with them on these sick days when they had like a minor cough and it used to really infuriate me and we haven't done the full sit down fair play thing but I had this realization of like Caroline you have never paid a credit card bill like you don't even look at the bank accounts George is doing the transferring and the investing and literally everything Mm -hmm. he's your CEO he's your COO he's your CFO like that is just one of your tasks tasks that's one of your jobs so like and that's so important to like if I was if I was able to actually like look and see that Mm -hmm. I think George quite frankly like you he runs our house out I've never looked at the trash I've never looked at a bill like he runs the house and I think realizing that helps Mm -hmm. as the like default parent in certain regards there's always going to be a default parent no but yes but if you're owning specific like I've I honestly think I've done the laundry once Mm -hmm. in our new home we've been there for a year Mm -hmm. Joe owns that task George is also the laundry like I sometimes I'm like, what do I do? No, I've had people message me. So what do you do? do I'm like, how do I sit down and explain to you? Block. Yeah. No, but okay. For instance, Joe has, Joe will never buy a piece of kids clothing. He doesn't know. That's such a good one. The next season, the next size. Yes. Like I'm managing the clothing. Yes. I'm managing right now, swapping out the zero to three into the new three and six. I know where, that's a lot of, like I know it's not, but the mental load, it's like, Mm -hmm. where is it? What's Mm -hmm. stored? Where are we buying from? Mm -hmm. What's the best deal? Mm -hmm. What size diaper are they? When's our diaper renewal come? When our formula comes, how often is it coming? How many cans are we getting? What formula is he on? All of these things, like that's a lot of- You just said like 10 to Right. So the mental load of those, I own all of those. Finances, I run my business finances. He runs our family, but I we have looks into everything because yeah. we share everything, um, and like little things that it, he runs the toilet paper, the paper towels. They're knowing yeah. where that is. I run the pantry, like just so you don't have to think about it. Yep. And I think it's so helpful to really sit down and be as like break it down as much mm-hmm. as you can. I have not fed our dog in God knows mm-hmm. how long. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't talked to our also, dog in God knows how long. I can't have a dog. <laughs> Literally. What? Never seen that dog once. Bless his heart. Um, I remember you posted about it and I responded and I was like, what are you even talking mm-hmm. about? You have a dog. No, it, his like tail will be in yeah. the background of a video and people are like, what is that? I'm right. like, oh, that's a dog that lives in my house. But it's so important to break this down because yeah. of the resentment. Yes. Okay. The resentment. I had a lot of postpartum resentment the first time. Uh-huh. Because all they did was come. Mm-hmm. Literally. Showed you had up. an orgasm. No, came. Oh, came. You had an orgasm yeah. and you become a father. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. I did. So, yeah. And you, your pregnancies are. Sucks. Suck. Physically, I have amazing pregnancies. I'm not even going to lie. Like, w- not physically. I mean, I'm sick the entire first trimester, okay, yeah, but I don't sick. actually throw up. It's in my throat. Um, <laughs> and so Fun. that's hell. But like. Yeah. Health wise, there yeah, are no yeah, complications. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. My deliveries have been a mm-hmm. godsend. Mm-hmm. My vagina does mm-hmm. the job and mm-hmm. heals. Mm-hmm. I don't actually gain that much weight. Like yeah. from the outside perspective, yes. my body is meant to be getting pregnant. Yes. Mentally, shit. Yes. Okay. Show. Okay, okay, okay. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. I am so depressed. Mm-hmm. I'm the worst version of myself. Mm-hmm. And it happened again with the second. Yeah. More depressed and anxious the second. Yeah. And what do you do? What did you do to combat that? Do you. I know you. I was just really depressed. Do I mean, you I unmedicate during pregnancy. No, I stay on my Zoloft. Okay, good. Um, and still, yeah, still depressed. Yeah. I upped uh, both pregnancies. I upped my dosages at uh-huh. one point. Uh-huh. I have my weekly therapy sessions. Um, you know, it, know. It, it's just really hard. Like being pregnant, I was just exhausted. Also chasing around toddlers, so there was none of that time for me to like wake up in the morning and have to myself to exercise. I barely exercised. I didn't yeah. journal. I didn't do those things that helped me. Right. I love cannabis. I didn't yeah. partake while I was right. pregnant. Um, I have a friend whose depression was so bad with her first pregnancy that she, she's like one of four. She wanted a huge family. She's like, I'm done. I can never yeah. feel that way again. So I, yeah, I said to Joe when I was pregnant, I will never do this again mm-hmm. unless I'm not working. Uh-huh. But we um, our jobs. Yeah. But, you know, Things change. Like, I, I yeah. yeah. 
It's it's really confusing. Um, yeah, it's hard. Okay. But the resentment, sorry. Yeah, yeah. All they do is orgasm. And I mean that in the way of like, my body just went through nine, 10 months of changes. Then the postpartum recovery mm -hmm. and physical, mental, hormonal, all of these things. And I remember the first time sitting there breastfeeding, he had done everything he could have done. Mm -hmm. My pump parts are clean. The mm -hmm. bottles are clean. The diaper, everything. So he was like, I'm just going to quickly hop on the Peloton, which like I also oh have to acknowledge. Yes. He is a very involved parent. He's yeah. tired. For him, exercise is yeah. such a big part of his mental he health. He also needed. Yeah. And I just remember hearing the Peloton in the other room in our apartment and being like, I'm going to fucking kill him. Mm -hmm. I hate him. Mm -hmm. He thinks his life just gets to yeah. stay the same. And it's not fair, but it's a very real feeling. So this time there's been way less of that. Yeah. But I also think the second time around, if you're in a heterosexual relationship, I think the second time around is almost a harder shift for the male. Because the first time the female, especially if you're breastfeeding, which I did for five months with our first, mm -hmm. He was doing all the things he could, but then while I was breastfeeding, like pretty much he was just on like, the Peloton. He's chilling. On, and like it, mm -hmm. it'd be one thing if he wasn't doing all of these other tasks. Yeah. But he had that time. And then the second time around, anytime I'm doing something with the oh. baby, he's with the toddler. He is. So he's on now suddenly duty. like, oh my fucking God. Yes. And I'm like, yeah, welcome to the room. There's world. no break. Yeah. And then he gets home from the park and he's like, okay, right. here's the toddler. Okay. And you're like, nope, here's the baby. Here's the baby. <laughs> Switch time. My friend Lily. It's so funny you say the Peloton story. She was saying they got home from the hospital with their first kid. They had a baby nurse. So the baby nurse like is there, takes the baby. She's like, you need to take a nap, like go mm -hmm. rest. And Bobby looks at her and is like, okay, I'm going to go to the gym for an hour. Like Jing's here. I'm going to hit the gym. And she just like looked at him and like couldn't even speak and like went into the bedroom. And she was like, I just sobbed mm -hmm. myself to sleep. Like I couldn't believe that this like deadbeat – motherfucker was going to the gym Isn't and abandoning funny? me and she was like I like now looking back like it was pure hormones oh but it feels like uh, my girlfriends and I joke that during postpartum you either are convinced you have the greatest partner in the entire world who you would never survive a second without or you're like I hate you mm -hmm. and by the way I am a married single person second to second, second to second yeah. it switches yeah the postpartum rage thing like there's one second I'll be like lovingly looking at George, like taking pictures of him mm -hmm. with the baby asleep on his chest. And then he's like, would you hand me that bottle of water? And I'm like, would I? You have two you hands. That bottle of water. No, it's, yeah, it's really intense. And, and then, then the roommate phase is so tough because. Yeah, you're in it. I'm in it. Yeah. It's getting better. Nobody talks about the roommate phase. And so it feels so terrifying. You're like, are we falling apart? I thought our marriage was over the first time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, well, bye. We, See you will, never. We, will I ever want to have sex with this person yeah. again? Do will they even ever like, let you touch me? me? Oh my God. Sometimes when I'm like newly postpartum, if George or like still like about to start my period, if George even gives me like a little back tap, I will literally. No. And he's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Joe, oh, Joe knows. He's like, do you want to hug or do you yes. not want to be touched? Yes. It starts in labor for me. Like, yeah. There are times. Well, I was in labor for like three freaking weeks. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't come near me. Sure. You're sure. Yeah, don't even. And then I was like, you have to have sex with me yes. because I need this baby out of my vagina. <laughs> did it work? No, I still. Of course it I did. mean, eventually, no, I got in. I eventually led to an induction. I got induced both times. But yeah. literally the second time they popped my water, the baby came out. I pushed for two minutes. Let's go. Two minutes. Yeah. I have on timestamps of photos. It yeah, was yeah, insane. Yeah. That's he awesome. He was just waiting. I also have to be induced every single time. Mm -hmm. And I always think like if I was a cave woman, would I just be dead in a cave? Dead in a cave Wonder with the same thing. Stuck in me. What? Inductions are a wild thing to Like me. I'm in labor. Yeah. But it's not coming but out. But it's not coming out. The vagina I was four centimeters dilated for three weeks. That was bad. Like where, why is this baby not exiting? And that they wouldn't induce you. No, they. Oh my god, they were booked. No beds. Fine, I get it. I, it like I had to say this many times. It's not the hospital worker's totally. fault. Totally. But like, what? But do it's you somebody's mean? fault. What do, do you know? The Jennifer yes. Lawrence. What, what do, do you mean? mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? That's how I felt. What do you fucking? No, mean? I can't even imagine that. You were in active labor or whatever. So the first pro time I was prodromal. The first time I was thirty six weeks. I went 36 and a half weeks. I went, I was having contractions every five minutes overnight. I'm like, oh my God, Joe, what's happening? We go in, I'm four centimeters dilated, contracting every five minutes. They're like, what's your pain tolerance? How are you feeling? And I'm like, I have a really high pain tolerance. Like, it doesn't feel good, but you know, obviously I'm having this conversation with you. 
And they're like, okay, we'll come back and check you in an hour. Come back. They're like, you haven't progressed. What do you want to do? I was like, what do you mean, what do I want to do? What do you mean, what do I want to do? And they're like, all right, we'll give you another hour. Still haven't progressed. They were, I was like, can't you induce me? And they're like, no, it's too early. I'm like, okay. So then they're like, you know what? Go home. Like, maybe you'll be back tonight. And I was like really nervous about going home. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. Of course you were. I think next week, maybe, happens again. I then wait there every four minutes. I call. I'm like, okay, listen, if I come in, will you induce me? I'm in actively, I'm in labor. Yeah. I'm having contractions every four minutes. I'm still four centimeters dilated. They say yes. Mm. I go. Those bitches. I go. You're still four centimeters. La, 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 la. I'm in triage. We're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. I'm like, well, can't you induce me? You know, we don't have any beds. I'm sorry. Now we don't have beds. I remember the nurse sitting down at my ta- at my bed in triage being like, honey, um, I think you need to go home. And I literally start hyster- hysterically. I don't oh. think I realized how exhausted and yes. emotionally and mentally drained I was. She touched my arm and I floodgates. Oh. And she was just sitting there so like. I'm, I'm I'm sorry. This is so awkward. What, and Joe's just kind of like, do I tell her to leave? And I kind of take over. Right. Like, but Stranger she wanted to, woman. Yeah. It was just, and I was like, it's okay. Like, it, it wasn't rage. It was just, oh, you were get s- this baby yeah. out. Yeah, I'm ready to start that next phase yeah. of my life. And then they were like, you know, we could do um, a, what's it called? A morphine drip so that you can actually rest. Because I, I hadn't slept in a week because I was contracting every night. Um so you can rest, but we don't even have a bed for that. So I'm like, why'd you even tell me? Why'd you even tell me? Why'd you tell me? Because um, I thought option. maybe if I rested, my body would actually progress. Right. Oh. So then schedule an induction. They say, okay, you just have to call two hours before the induction. It's at 9 p.m., okay. 7 o'clock. We say goodnight to Liam. Sorry. We say goodnight to our toddler. And I'm like, I love you. Goodbye. Like, this is it. I'll come home with a baby. Put him to bed. My parents are there to watch him call. And they're like, oh, so sorry. We don't have any beds. I'm literally like, are you? So then I get in a fight with the on-call OB in my group. Of course you do. And I literally, literally no other ask option. him, "What? how long are you working tonight? What time are you off your shift? And he tells me, I said, okay, good, because I will not be delivering with you. Like, I refuse. At this point, I was like, baby, stay in there because yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. delivering with this man. Yeah, he did doing not it. vibe uh-huh. at all. Uh-huh. He was really a, a jerk. Um Baby stays in the, the next fact morning. That people like that are in this line of work. I'm like, no. He goes, oh, I didn't sign up for this 20 years ago knowing I was going to be dealing overnight with all these. Fa-. I'm like, what? excuse me? What'd you sign up for? I'm like, well, okay, hold on. Uh, this he, is, he wanted the type it of was, like uh, 60s um, deliveries where they just knocked the mom yeah. out and then they woke up 20 hours yes. later. The baby. So anyway, I end up going in the next morning. Finally, they hook me up. They break my water mm-hmm. and wham bam kabam within like i think three or four hours and two minutes of pushing uh-huh, he came out pushing. he was just waiting i think that the insane everyone like we all know every labor is different like you know so different. every birth is going to be different like you hear that but there's no way to actually comprehend mm-hmm. like how wildly different your experience is going to be from a friend from someone from a friend. yeah my first with mattis it was like a 36 hours of like pure agony like i couldn't i i was in Pitocin labor, you know, like oh, being in the worst for like eight hours did not. That was my first. Dilate. Oh, God. A single. And so I finally got an epidural at zero centimeters. No. An epidural at zero centimeters. So I was then had to sit there for 36 hours, like stewing in my like incapacitated yeah. fat leg I had syndrome. A, I think it was, I got my epidural with my first, it was, I think, 20 hours. Yeah. And I was so anxious the whole time because I was like, this isn't and right. I'm shaking. I'm throwing yeah, up. This it's isn't awful. what's supposed to be. And then with my third, so that was Mattis. And then my second flew out. Like I didn't get the epidural in time. Ooh, no. 10 out of 10 do not recommend. And then so my third, I was sure even having had two very different, I was sure my third was going to fly out because the second had, and it was again like a 30 hour labor. It's really confusing. But that one I was, I just chilled. And I, I like, well, I texted my girlfriends. I literally have a video of me birthing our second and I'm oh, giggling. So I'll show you. Yes. I'm laughing him out of my yes. vagina. And I don't mean that. I fully realize that is not normal. But no, like, no, no. I, I had think when you're on an epidural. Incredible delivery it is. experience. Yeah. Or it can it, be. Sent to my group chat and my girlfriend who had a horrific delivery. Right. Like hemorrhaging. Yes. Response. And was like, for all you bitches in here who yes. have not had kids, yes. I want you to know. Yes. Do not expect this. <laughs> Let me send you my video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's like very different. Yeah, they but it, from conception 
to adulthood. Mm. Everyone's experience is so different. And that's mm-hmm. what I always try to remind people of. Mm-hmm. Like I can share my downs mm-hmm. because maybe it'll help someone who's also in that down. Yes. And like maybe they just won't feel alone. But I'll, I also try to share my highs because like e- to know that it can go a different way uh-huh. if you haven't experienced it uh-huh. yet. It's funny. I'll I'll try to share. I'll share an experience thinking it's such a completely unique thing to my child. 5,000 DMs. No, we DMs have no with, unique experiences. There, isn't, there are no unique experiences but each child can be so completely different. But like yeah. it, somebody out there has had the exact same experience that you have. There's a TikTok that's like TikTok has – I see these comments all the time. Uh-huh. And it's like TikTok has shown me that I have not had one unique experience yes. in my life. Yes. Did not you see one. the one that was like um, the girl who does the Martha Washington yes. yeah, hair yeah. flip thing? And it like went crazy viral. And then she like followed it up and was like, I thought that that was something that me and my sister made up. Right. And it turns out everyone, everyone else did, it. did this across the world. Everyone. I mean, talk about TMI, but like when I, speaking of pools, yeah. when I was, I don't know how old, young, yeah. young enough to know, young, old enough to realize this felt good, <laughs> young enough to not realize that I was <laughs> masturbating good in my pool, Nana's yes. pool, would put my fucking legs over the side of her pool and like, just hang this? with the jet on my yep. badge yep. and be like, this feels so good. And yep. my poor parents would yep. just be like, watching. oh my God. So funny. I have a but I thought I was the only one that did that. Uh-huh. And then I shared it on my TikTok or Instagram and so many people were like, oh my God, I did the same thing. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I grew up with a pool in my backyard 100%. I think my sister taught me how. She was like, this is what you do. At least it was in your, I was at my nana's yeah. with like all my aunts and uncles yeah. around, cousins. Yeah, 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 I think yeah, yeah, we were yeah. all just lined yeah. up around the pool on the jets. I have a friend who, I have, most of my friends weirdly have boys and I have one friend who has a daughter and she is just constantly humping things. Yeah. Like, you know, humping is not the word, but she's rocking. just like, rocking, rocking. Yeah. And she's like, you know, I'm not supposed to say anything. Like, you're supposed to just kind of let them explore. She has no idea what it is, but like, she'll be like, we're at the gym, like their gym class. Yeah. And she's just like, no, mama. Absolutely. Feels good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, My God. boys get boners all the time as little boys do and what do they call their their rocket penises they'll be like look mama i have a rocket penis like the dogs i'm like perfect oh my yeah. god there's not the pink rocket on a dog makes me literally want to don't like that hate it. hate it hate it hate it yep. hate it all right we could talk about rocket penises all day but you could. have got to get upstate i know i love you i love you thank oh. you so much for having me i'm I so happy to new york so we can do this please every day thank Wouldn't you so much for coming on yes it would be of course i'm happy to be on here oh wait what? Where can we find you? Oh, um, Instagram and TikTok at Cameron Oaks Rogers. Mm-hmm. No D in my last name. Good distinction. Um, and my show is Freckles Foodie and Friends. I release every Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Caroline is on. So I'm sure you'll mm-hmm. link in the show notes. Yeah, whatever. we release every Wednesday. So today you can also find yes. me on Cameron's. Um, my, I do have a separate Instagram for that. It's at FF and Friends Pod. And I think that's that's all my pimping. Mm-hmm. Until I convince you to start a Substack. I know. It's it's on our agenda of conversations. So many things to do. Work chat. Okay. I love you. I love you. Bye.